Men suffer all their life long under the foolish superstition that they can be cheated. But it is as impossible for a man to be cheated by anyone but himself as for a thing to be and not to be at the same time. There is a third silent party to all our bargains. The nature and soul of things takes on itself the guarantee of fulfillment of every contract, so that honest service cannot come to loss. Before you begin the experiment that you have been requested to undertake, read Emerson's essay on compensation, for it will go a very long way toward helping you to understand why you are making the experiment. Perhaps you have read compensation before. Read it again. One of the strange phenomena that you will observe about this essay may be found in the fact that every time you read it, you will discover new truths that you did not notice during previous readings. A few years ago, I was invited to deliver the graduation address before the students of an Eastern college. During my address, I dwelt at length, and with all the emphasis at my command, on the importance of rendering more service and better service than that for which one is paid. After the address was delivered, the president and the secretary of the college invited me to luncheon. While we were eating, the secretary turned to the president and said, I have just found out what this man is doing. He is putting himself ahead in the world by first helping others to get ahead. In that brief statement, he had epitomized the most important part of my philosophy on the subject of success. It is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others to succeed. Some ten years ago, when I was engaged in the advertising business, I built my entire clientele by the application of the fundamentals upon which this lesson is founded. By having my name placed on the follow-up lists of various mail-order houses, I received their sales literature. When I received a sales letter or a booklet or a folder which I believed I could improve, I went right to work on it and made the improvement, then sent it back to the firm that had sent it to me with a letter stating that this was but a trifling sample of what I could do, that there were plenty of other good ideas where that one came from, and that I would be glad to render regular service for a monthly fee. Invariably, this brought an order for my services. On one occasion, I remember that the firm was dishonest enough to appropriate my idea and use it without paying me for it, but this turned out to be an advantage to me in this way. A member of the firm who was familiar with the transaction started another business, and as a result of the work I had done for his former associates for which I was not paid, he engaged me to serve him on a basis that paid me more than double the amount I would have realized from his original firm. Thus the law of compensation gave back to me, and with compound interest added, that which I had lost by rendering service to those who were dishonest. If I were looking for a profitable field of employment today, I could find it by again putting into action this plan of rewriting sales literature as a means of creating a market for my services. Perhaps I would find others who would appropriate my ideas without paying for them. But by and large, people would not do this for the simple reason that it would be more profitable to them to deal fairly with me and thereby avail themselves of my continued services. Several years ago, I was invited to deliver a lecture before the students of the Palmer School at Davenport, Iowa. My manager completed arrangements for me to accept the invitation under the regular terms in effect at that time, which were $100 for the lecture and my traveling expenses. When I arrived at Davenport, I found a reception committee awaiting me at the depot, and that evening I was given one of the warmest welcomes I had ever received during my public career up to that time. I met many delightful people from whom I gathered many valuable facts that were of benefit to me. Therefore, when I was asked to make out my expense account so the school could give me a check, I told them that I had received my pay many times over by that which I had learned while I was there. I refused my fee and returned to my office in Chicago feeling well repaid for the trip. The following morning, Dr. Palmer went before the 2,000 students of his school and announced what I had said about feeling repaid by what I had learned and added, In the twenty years that I have been conducting this school, I have had scores of speakers address the student body, but this is the first time I ever knew a man to refuse his fee because he felt that he had been repaid for his services in other ways. This man is the editor of a national magazine, and I advise every one of you to subscribe for that magazine, because such a man as this must have much that each of you will need when you go into the field and offer your services. 
By the middle of that week, I had received more than $6,000 for subscriptions to the magazine of which I was editor. And during the following two years, these same 2,000 students and their friends sent in more than $50,000 for subscriptions. Tell me, if you can, how or when I could have invested $100 as profitably as this. By refusing to accept my $100 fee and thereby setting the law of increasing returns to work in my behalf. We go through two important periods in this life. One is that period during which we are gathering, classifying, and organizing knowledge. And the other is that period during which we are struggling for recognition. We must first learn something which requires more effort than most of us are willing to put into the job. But after we have learned much that can be of useful service to others, we are still confronted with the problem of convincing them that we can serve them. One of the most important reasons why we should always be not only ready but willing to render service is the fact that every time we do so, we gain thereby another opportunity to prove to someone that we have ability. We go just one more step toward gaining the necessary recognition that we must all have. Instead of saying to the world, show me the color of your money and I will show you what I can do, reverse the rule and say, let me show you the color of my service so that I may take a look at the color of your money if you like my service. In 1917, a certain woman who was then nearing the 50-year milepost of life was working as a stenographer at $15 a week. Judging by the salary, she must have been none too competent in that work. Now, note this change. Last year, this same woman cleared a little over $100,000 on the lecture platform. What bridged that mighty chasm between these two earning capacities, you ask? And I answer, the habit of performing more service and better service than that for which she was paid, thereby taking advantage of the law of increasing returns. This woman is well known throughout the country, as she is now a prominent lecturer on the subject of applied psychology. Let me show you how she harnessed the law of increasing returns. First, she goes into a city and delivers a series of fifteen free lectures. All may attend who will, without money and without price. During the delivery of these fifteen lectures, she has the opportunity of selling herself to her audience. And at the end of the series, she announces the formation of a class for which she charges twenty-five dollars per student. That's all there is to her plan. Where she is commanding a small fortune for a year's work, there are scores of much more proficient lecturers who are barely getting enough from their work to pay their expenses, simply because they have not yet familiarized themselves with the fundamentals upon which this lesson is based, as she has done. Now, I would like to have you stop right here and answer this question. If a fifty-year-old woman who has no extraordinary qualifications can harness the law of increasing returns and make it raise her from the position as stenographer at fifteen dollars a week to that of lecturer at over a hundred thousand dollars a year, why cannot you apply this same law so that it will give you advantages that you do not now possess? Never mind what is to come in the remainder of this lesson until you have answered this question and answered it as it should be answered. You are struggling, either meekly or earnestly, to make a place for yourself in the world. Perhaps you are exerting enough effort to bring you success of the highest order, if that effort were coupled with and supported by the law of increasing returns. For this reason, you owe it to yourself to find out just how you can apply this law to best advantage. Now, go back to that question again, for I am determined that you shall not pass it by lightly without giving yourself the benefit of at least trying to answer it. In other words, there is no mistaking the fact that you are being brought face to face with a question that vitally affects your future, and if you evade it, the fault will be with you. You may lay this lesson aside after you have read it, and it is your privilege to do so without making any attempt to profit by it, but if you do so, you will never again be able to look at yourself in a mirror without being haunted by the feeling that you have deliberately cheated yourself. Perhaps this is telling the truth in an undiplomatic way. But when you purchased this course on the law of success, you did so because you wanted facts, and you are getting them without the embellishment of apology. After you have finished this lesson, if you will go back and review the lessons on initiative and leadership and enthusiasm, you will better understand those lessons. Those lessons, and this one, clearly establish the necessity of taking the initiative 
following it with aggressive action, and doing more than you are paid to do. If you will burn the fundamentals of these three lessons into your consciousness, you will be a changed person. And I make this statement regardless of who you are or what your calling may be. If this plain language has made you angry, I am glad, for it indicates that you can be moved. Now, if you would profit by the counsel of one who has made many more mistakes than you ever made, and for that reason learned a few of the fundamental truths of life, harness this anger and focus it on yourself until it drives you forth to render the service of which you are capable. If you will do this, you can collect a king's ransom as your reward.